Well, today we're going to discuss how to use Megasig Pro for broadcast TV. We're a local cable channel tied in with a LPTV station and we'll be using the outstanding Mac-based automation software Megasig Pro 6 to stream the channel as our playout software. The computer is a 2016 Mac Mini which has an HDMI port which will serve as our program video out. The video is sent to an REI HDMI splitter one feed is sent to our control room monitor, the other is sent to a Marshall VS-102 HDI streaming encoder, which sends a signal via internet to the cable head end. You can also send uh, the HDMI feed to an MPEG-2 encoder if you're doing uh, over-the-air television. Before we launch Megasig Pro, one thing that we must do is to make sure that in the mission control preferences, that the displays have separate spaces is unchecked and not selected. This will prevent the Mac from showing a menu bar when the program video is output for the cable head end. You may need to restart the Mac. Next we launch Megasig. To make sure that we're sending the program stream to the right source, we go to Settings and under Preferences we click Devices and under Playlist Output we select the Mac's HDMI port. Now if you have a higher end Mac that allows multiple displays, you can select another port with a monitor for a preview output. In our content library, we have a variety of video formats. We have MPEG-2, DB25, DVC Pro 50, and MPEG-4 720p. The first two formats are SD and 4x3, the Pro 50 is SD 16x9, and the MPEG-4 720p is HD. The beautiful thing about Megaseg and Mac QuickTime is that they will play all these formats correctly and in any order. The 4.3 formats will display with black bars on the sides and the 16x9 formats will play full screen, either SD or HD. To accomplish this we go to Video in Megaseg and select Full Screen Letterboxed. Also make sure that Open When Video Plays is selected as well. If you have a video file that QuickTime cannot play, such as AVI or FLV, bring that file into a free app known as Handbrake, and Handbrake will convert that file into a format QuickTime and Megaseg can play. The default is H.264. Now programming with Megasig involves three basic steps, categories, schedules and playlists, and events. To create a new category, go to Settings, Events, go to the New Events drop-down menu, and click on Insert Category. A Select Category window appears, click Add, and create a new category. Next, click on the Import button. Make sure the correct category is selected and click Select a Folder. The files will import into Megasig. Again, it's critical that the video files are numbered so that Megaseg will play them in the correct order. We also need to make sure that the categories are set up to never rotate. This means Megaseg will play each file once and in sequence. To do that, we go to Settings, Scheduler, Category Settings, and select Never. The programming is done primarily as playlists created in the schedule window and the playlists are then turned into events. Let's program an episode of The Phil Silver Show.
we begin with a new blank schedule. We drag and drop the Phil Silver's Show category into the scheduler. Now notice we don't have 30 minutes filled yet, so we must fill up the schedule to make a half hour. The Phil Silver's Show, like most of our shows, is in three segments so that we can add spots, PSAs, and bumpers into the show. Megaseg will play the Phil Silver's Show in order if the video files are numbered properly. Notice the time is a second over 30 minutes. That's okay, Megaseg will still play the next schedule at the correct time. Be sure to save the playlist. After you have created a day's worth of programming playlists, we'll begin to assemble our program day. We do this through our events window. Click on Settings to call up that window. You will see the New Event drop-down menu and select Open Playlist. The Playlists window appears. Select the one you want. A dialog box comes up that asks you to time the event. Since it's TV, which works on the hour and half hour, we need to make sure that the playlist plays exactly on time. To do that, we set our time and date, or if it's every day, we simply set the time. Also, click on the Interrupt Current Track or Break box. Very important. This ensures that Megasig will start the playlist right on time. If we forget to click the interrupt, we can do so after the fact by selecting the playlist and clicking on the options column. A menu appears and we can select interrupt. When you have finished your day's programming or partial day, you will want to save that event so that you can recall it later. Also, you can link events using the switch events list. Incidentally, while Megaseg is playing out the programming through the events window, you can continue to create new playlists and add those to the events later on. Finally, to start the entire program, just press play, or with the events selected, Megaseg will automatically start at the first time and day specified in the playlist. If for some reason the playlist is short of videos, or if Megaseg has stopped for some reason, you want to make sure that your station's logo is showing and not anything else. On our program out monitor, we see the Mac desktop picture. We want to change that so that our logo appears. We do that through the desktop appearance window. We select a picture file, in this case our logo, and now the desktop is the logo. If you have a video file with a countdown or slate, you can trim that out in Megaseg. No need to physically edit the video in another app. Even if you can't see the countdown, you can hear it. Select the Edit button to perform this action. Well, that's about it for using Megaseg Pro 6 for episodic TV. For well under $1,000, including software and computer, you have a playout server that will play a single channel of SD or HD video. In our next how-to video, we'll show you how to use Megaseg Pro 6 for playing movies with spots and bumpers for TV output.